This is Jeffrey Dahmer, the infamous serial slayer, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal or the Milwaukee Monster. He lured 17 young men into his home. He would drug them and strangle them, and then he would use their bodies for his own gratification. Let's look at the 13 most shocking facts about this case. Hey guys, welcome to my channel Mystery Inquest. My name is Veronica and I make true crime and mystery videos. If there is something that you are into, then please subscribe and tickle the notification bell. Okay guys, in this video we will look closer at the most shocking facts about Jeffrey Dahmer. And just a heads up guys, this case is pretty gruesome. I mean, I will not show any explicit pictures or anything gross like that. I don't even want to see that guys. And also I will try not to describe anything in a graphic detail. But still, if you are younger or more sensitive to these kind of things, please click off and I'll see you at my next video. Okay guys, for the rest of you, let's go over a brief overview of this case. But first, get comfortable, grab your cushion, like I have here, or your pooch. <laughs> it's not here right now. Okay, guys, just get comfortable and let's start at the beginning. Jeffrey Lionel Dummer, or JD, as I will also call him in this video, was born on May 21st, 1960 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to Mother Joyce, a teletype machine instructor, and Lionel Dummer, a research chemist. Dummer also had a younger brother whom he named David. Yes, guys, you heard right. Jeffrey was allowed to choose the baby's name. Jeffrey didn't have the easiest childhood with his father, mostly either studying or working away from home, and his mother was emotionally unstable and neglectful due to her depression and mental health problems. She even attempted a self-demise. Joyce was also a diagnosed hypochondriac who demanded a constant attention from her emotionally and physically distant husband. Sadly, a lot of Jeffrey's early memories include his parents engaging in explosive fights which he witnessed on a regular basis. At first, Dahmer was a happy and energetic child until he had a hernia surgery at almost four years old, after which he became subdued and reserved. Jeffrey was mostly left to his own devices and he grew increasingly lonely. He was a quiet child, but he did have a few friends at school. JD became fascinated by dead animals after he watched his father remove bones from under the house. Jeffrey also became oddly transfixed by the sounds the bones made and he called them his fiddlesticks. Dahmer began to search for more bones and later any dead animals he could find, be it a roadkill or dead animal in the woods. Dahmer Sr. was delighted and mistakenly believed that his son expressed a scientific curiosity. Allegedly, father and son bonded over collecting and preserving roadkill. It has been reported that Dummer's father taught Jeffrey how to clean and preserve the dead animals and their bones. When Dummer became a teenager, he realized that he was attracted to boys, but he kept it a secret. He did have a brief relationship with another teenage boy at this time. And also at this time, he began fantasizing about totally submissive male partners who would let Dummer dominate them completely. The main focus of his fantasies were male chests and torsos. Somehow his sexual feelings got enmeshed with his fascination with death, dead bodies, dissection and viscera or organs you guys. At first animals and eventually humans. Jeffrey became a complete outcast and a weirdo as he entered high school. He began drinking heavily to numb the pain of his loneliness. When JD was almost done with high school, his parents finally divorced. Dummer's father left the family home and got married to his second wife. His mother and brother left suddenly without much explanation to live with their relatives. Jeffrey Dummer was left alone in the family home. And this situation, guys, created the perfect storm when he picked up a bare-chested hitchhiker, Stephen Hicks, who accidentally became his first victim. He went on to lure and murder 16 more young men, mostly African-American, although Dummer refused a racial motive. He explained that he was simply attracted to a man's beautiful physique, regardless of race. His first two killings were apparently accidents. However, after the second one, he lost all moral restraint and went on to become one of the most notorious killers of the last century. Dummer expressed that he didn't want the man to leave him due to his massive abandonment issues. He was later diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, among others. He desired 
absolute control over his victims and this would eventually escalate into more gruesome practices. The murderer was finally caught in 1991, 13 years after his first victim was murdered. His last intended victim, Tracy Edwards, managed to escape. The police he brought to the apartment found Dummer's gruesome Polaroid photographs and arrested the monster immediately. He was sentenced to 941 years in prison. Okay guys, so let's look at the 13 of the most shocking facts of this case. Actually guys, there are way more than 13 facts because during my research, I kept coming across more and more shocking facts. But I like the number 13 better in the title guys, so <laughs> I didn't want to redo it. So here we go guys. Number 25. JD would often wear yellow contact lenses like his movie heroes, the Gemini Killer and Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars while he went to local gay clubs on the hunt for his next victim. Dahmer watched The Exorcist 3 movie at least three times a week before going out and then terrifyingly he insisted on watching the movie with his victims. Guys, if a strange dude with yellow creepy eyes approached you in the bar, would you go anywhere with him? I don't think I would. <laughs> Number 24. Dahmer said he never wanted to actually hurt anybody. That's why he drugged and strangled his victims to minimize their suffering. He wanted to keep them with him forever. And that's why he kept their bones and heads. Number 23. Jeffrey got aroused by a perfectly chiseled male mannequin, the one that clothes are displayed on at the stores. Yeah. And he actually stole one from the Boston store and he kept it in his room. He used the mannequin for sexual stimulation until his grandma found it and ordered him to get rid of it. If only grandma knew. Guys, do you think he would start killing again if he was allowed to keep the mannequin? Comment below. Number 22. Dummer sometimes painted, spray painted or coated in enamel the skulls of his victims. Yeah that happened. Number 21. Dummer was nearly caught a few times but always narrowly escaped due to his calm demeanor and quick thinking. After he chopped up his first victim to pieces and stuffed him into garbage bags, he attempted to take it somewhere to dispose of it. When he was stopped by the police for a minor traffic violation, he told them he was going for a ride because he was upset about his parents' divorce. He was just a perfect manipulator, right? When the police officer shone a flashlight in the back and asked what was in the bags, Jeffrey calmly told him it was just some trash he was taking to the dump. And just like that, he was let go. That's crazy guys. I don't know about you, but I would just probably confess right there and then. I'd... Oh my god. Number 20. Dummer's father and stepmother professed their love for their son despite the atrocities he committed. What about you guys? Would you still love your family members if they did what JD did? Comment below. Number 19. On one occasion, Dahmer accidentally drank the beverage with the sedatives intended for his victim. When he woke up the next day, he found out that the guy stole his clothes, a watch and $300 in cash. JD didn't report the robbery to the police, for obvious reasons. Number 18. There was a gap of 9 years between his first and second victims. Due to Dahmer actually trying to live a proper life at first, enlisting in an army, but he was discharged after just a year most likely due to his alcoholism. He was then allowed to live with his grandmother in the hopes of sorting out his life for the better. And at first, he really tried. He helped his grandma with household chores and even going to the church, hoping it would help him overcome his unhealthy obsessions. But then he discovered the local gay bars and he was presented with a lot of opportunity to victimize others. At first, he was satisfied with just drugging his victims and doing whatever he wanted with them. And this brings us to Number 17. Dummer's second victim, Stephen Tommy, was killed in an alcoholic blackout. JD claimed that he didn't plan or even remember killing him and that he was upset about it. Later, he told the investigators, quote, I could not believe this had happened, end quote. Nevertheless, this incident truly started his killing spree because he lost all all moral inhibitions and let himself do whatever he wanted to satisfy his urges. Number 16. During the time of his most killings, Dahmer frequently complained to his probation officer about feeling lonely, depressed and suffering from anxiety. Number 15. After a number of killings, Dahmer devised a plan of creating a sex zombie. Yes guys, you heard right. The sex zombie would satisfy his every need and he wouldn't have to kill anyone. 
right? So he was actually doing a good thing. Oh my goodness, the logic. He then proceeded to experiment with drilling a hole in the frontal lobe of his victims and injecting them either with hydrochloric acid or hot water in order to induce a zombie-like state. Except it never quite worked. Number 14. After his confession, he asked the detective for a Bible. He then became a born-again Christian and was baptized in a prison pool. He repeatedly stated that he deserves everything he gets in prison and he wished for death. He told his mother that he didn't care about what happened to him. Don't they all start believing in God when they go to prison? <laughs> Number 13. The monster was caught after a 13-year-old testified that he was molested by Dahmer. The judge was more sympathetic to Dahmer than the actual victim and sentenced him to a lenient one-year sentence in sort of a halfway house jail where Dahmer could leave the prison during the day to go to work but he had to return for the night. He was also registered as a sex offender and put on probation. Sadly, the probation officer never properly checked on Dahmer and so he got away with a lot of killings. Number 12. Oh guys, this is crazy. A skull of 27-year-old Edward Smith accidentally exploded in the oven when Dahmer was trying to dry it out. Number 11. Whilst Dahmer was awaiting his sentencing for molesting the boy, he murdered his fifth victim, a model, Anthony Sears. Dahmer found him especially attractive, so he permanently kept his head and genitals preserved in acetone. He kept the jars in a wooden box. And guys, this is just unbelievable, but he took the box to work with him at the chocolate factory. And he kept it in his locker. Ugh, you guys. This is so gross. He wasn't even trying to be careful, was he? Number 10. JD performed sexual acts on his victims after he killed them. Yes. Although he later told an expert witness that he preferred comatose partners to deceased ones 75% of the time. Unbelievable. Number 9. When asked why he kept the skulls and two entire skeletons of his victims, Dahmer confessed that he wanted to construct a private altar adorned with black cloth with black curtain blocking out the light from the window. This would finally make him feel like home and he would meditate and get power from it. He added that if he was caught six months later, that's what the police officer would find in his apartment. Number 8. Allegedly, Jeffrey's dad teamed up with a Canadian cult collector, Taylor James, to sell Dahmer's things he owned when he was in prison, including his glasses and even his ashes. They would then split the profit. This is kind of gross too, guys. How can his father be okay with profiting from these horrific crimes? Number 7. Dahmer got sexual gratification from viscera, internal organs. I have no words. Number 6. Dahmer would boil a victim's head in a mixture of soilex and bleach to clean it off all soft tissues. He kept the skull, which he used as a stimulus for self-gratification until it became too brittle by the bleaching process. He then smashed the skull into pieces and powder as much as he could and threw it out. Why didn't he just get props? Why did he have to freaking kill people for it? Number 5. It wasn't enough for Dahmer to completely possess his victims. He wanted to feel even closer closer to them. And so, naturally, he just started to eat their hearts and flesh. The police officers that finally caught him found a human head in the fridge and packed human meat in the freezer. I'll have to take a shower after this, guys. This is the whole thing. It's just so gross. Number four. Apparently, Dahmer's father admitted to having homicidal feelings himself, but he never acted on them when he was an adult. He was able to resist them while Jeff wasn't. When Lionel was a kid, he made homemade explosives. One of them allegedly knocked a boy off his bike. He also admitted that he tried to hypnotize his neighbor Junie so he could have a total control over her in order to have his way with her. Allegedly, he didn't go through with it in the end. Lionel wrote a book where he tried to pinpoint why Jeff turned out the way he did and he blames himself for not paying more attention to him and also he thinks it might be genetic because he found a lot of similarities between himself and Jeff when they were both children. Well guys, if this isn't genetic, I don't know what else is. I think this is both nature and nurture or not nurture in this case because Jeff surely wasn't nurtured when he was a child. Okay guys, before we go to the last three most shocking facts of the Milwaukee monster, smash that like button, 
subscribe and turn the notification on so you don't miss any future uploads okay here we go number three jeffrey dahmer became a murder victim himself when a schizophrenic inmate christopher scarver killed him and another inmate jd had no defensive wounds and ironically he was killed in the same way as his first victim with a hand barbell this looks like karma to me guys number two when jd was caught shockingly he confessed and took full responsibility with no excuses and without blaming anyone else but himself. He felt remorse, which is unusual for this type of murder. I think the Dahmer probably felt relieved that he could finally tell somebody what he was doing. He said to the investigators, quote, I created this horror and it only makes sense. I do everything to put an end to it, end quote. Number one, the most shocking facts of all. One of his victims, Konerak Synthasomphone, a 14-year-old Lao boy whose older brother JD molested previously, managed to escape escaped the apartment of horror after Dahmer did the lobotomy procedure on him. Guys, he escaped. He actually escaped. He was found naked and talking to himself in Lao by three girls who called the police. Dahmer happened to get there from the store shortly before the police arrived. He attempted to take the terrified boy back to his apartment, but the girls protested and said no, the police is on its way. And again, Dahmer remained as cool as a cucumber as he explained to the officers that his boyfriend was just drunk. Despite the girls' protest, the police officers told them to quote, shut the hell up and butt out, end quote. And they actually helped Dahmer bring Konerak back to his apartment. Sadly, Konerak was killed immediately after the officers left. Can you imagine escaping a serial monster only to be returned to him by the very people that are supposed to help you? On top of that, if the cops looked around more closely, they would find a corpse in the bedroom. They could have prevented countless more murders if they did their job properly. The officers were later fired but got their jobs back eventually. Unbelievable. One of the girl's mother, Glenda Cleveland, later called the police and even the FBI repeatedly to inquire about Konerak, but she was dismissed every single time. She was the only one who was trying to raise alarm about Dahmer, but sadly, nobody listened to her. I know you told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way Cause you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away 